Guys, welcome to Charisma HQ. My name is Kirill. Today we'll be doing an installation on a F90 M5. We'll be installing one of our new design signature steering wheels with the Ferrari shift light integration. I'll be walking you through the process of putting the steering wheel on the car, wiring up the shift light, as well as explaining uh, all the intricacies and details of the process. This particular design, our signature design, will also be available in the X3, X4, X5, X6, as well as the 3, 4, 5, and 8 series models, and their respective M models, of course. So you can contact us to find out which one is uh, compatible or appropriate for your car. And while the installation process will be a little different from model to model, this video should give you a rough idea of where to start if you're going to be doing this install on your own. Originally inspired by our Huracan flat top steering wheel, which did very well in the market, we've been getting a lot of requests from the BMW community asking for something similar. You know, a very well defined flat top as well as thickened aggressive side grips. Um, and a couple of AutoCAD files later, here is our uh, prototype. This is 3D printed. This is what we actually produced first to make sure that fitment is good, everything works with the splining as well as center trim fits, paddles fit, etc. And uh, right next to it, you of course see a fully finished steering wheel in the flesh, you know, with carbon, red leather, red stitching, and a uh, red strap on it. So, without any further ado, we're going to jump right into the installation process on the steering wheel. I'm going to show you how to do it. As with all installs, for safety's sake, we're going to disconnect the battery. In the M5, it's actually in the trunk. If you're installing on a different model, just reference your manual to find out where your battery is. We already disconnected the negative terminal of the battery. There we go. That's all you need to do. Just make sure it doesn't you know, snap back on and we can get started on the actual installation. We're now in, inside of the car. First step, as always, is to remove the airbag. The airbag in this scenario is held in uh, from the side, bottom side on both sides, on the left and the right. To get to those two uh, springs holding the airbag in, we're actually going to puncture the housing of your original steering wheel on the bottom left and the bottom right corners. Um, there's going to be an indentation mark from the factory where you put a tool through. It can be difficult to imagine what that spring looks like that's holding the airbag when your steering wheel is fully assembled on your car and you're trying you know, to poke around in that little hole on the bottom left and bottom right to find the releasing mechanism. So to explain that process, uh, this steering wheel is already off. We're a step ahead of you, but we're just going to show you what exactly those two springs look like and what it looks like inside. And hopefully they'll help you, uh, you know, guide you in the direction of finding that spring just by feel. You'll know what that motion will look like and feel like. So from the bottom left, I think that is the left. Yeah. We're going to have our tool right here. This is our Allen key. Come in and this is right here the channel within which that release spring is held. If you look closely, when I push on this, that gray spring moves. That gray spring then, in turn, releases the airbag, which is in the clip hole right above it. Same situation we're going to do on the other side. And once both clips are released, the airbag will come out. I'm going to go in from the bottom left first. We find the hole, we push the Allen key through, and you should be able to feel around uh, it'll take some finagling to find where exactly the spring sits, so just have some patience with it. Uh, at some point, you should be able to depress the spring and you'll feel the bottom left corner of the airbag on clip. You're going to repeat the same process on the left side. And once the left side is unclipped, the airbag should come right out. Now that we have the airbag out, we're actually going to not unclip any of the clips on the back of the airbag itself. We're just going to unclip the center clip by the uh, clock spring on the actual steering wheel itself instead. We're just going to go in here with that same Allen key or tool we've been using. We're going to press from the top. It's going to depress the clip and you should be able to pull that connector right out. That's it. Your airbag's out. Put that aside and we can proceed. There's two more wires we need to disconnect. After that, we unscrew our center nut and we can take the steering wheel off. So these two wires you will obviously see connected to the steering wheel right here in the center. There is no uh, restraining clip or so to speak, nothing to press on to pull these out. So just give it a little bit of uh, force to yank it out here. And same thing with the bottom one. These two are now out. We're free to disconnect our um, center nut and we should be good to go. The center nut is removed by a 16 mil socket in this case. Um, you might need another person to hold the steering wheel while you break loose the center nut. It really just depends on how much Loctite was put you know, on the wheel from the factory. Let's give it a try here. 
so I just broke loose the center nut. There was a lot of Loctite on this car. Um, we have pulled it out. We're actually going to screw it back in a little bit right now. Just by hand is enough. What we're provisioning here uh, for here is I'll be able to take the steering wheel off no matter how tightly it's seated on there without ripping out whatever is behind it, including, you know, the clock spring, which is kind of delicate. So this gives us uh, a chance to wobble it and uh, pull it off and make sure nothing gets damaged in the process. Now that we know the steering wheel's off, I can finally remove the nut with no risk. And we should be able to just take the steering wheel off at this point. There we go. Here we have our OEM steering wheel. We're gonna transfer all of these buttons, paddles onto our new wheel. And what we're gonna start with is actually removing the shift paddles off of the steering wheel. So the shift paddles are held on with a T20 Torx bit. And you're gonna find the screw that holds it right behind the blue connector inside of the steering wheel. We're gonna take this one out on one side. And we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other. Once those two screws are out or loosened, you'll be able to actually pull the shift paddle back out on the steering wheel, make sure it comes out, make sure the second one comes out, and now we can unclip the wire that holds it. This connector is actually on the other side. We pull it through this hole a little bit because it's easier to get access to unclipping it on this side. And then what we want to do is we want to use a tool to just wedge something under the side right here with the elevation and pry the connector out. It sits there pretty tight, so gonna have to give it some a little bit of force to get it out and here we go do that on both sides and we'll be on to our next step next step we're gonna actually take off the faceplate the trim that holds your buttons so all we're gonna do is in the back here there's gonna be three t20 screws once again we're gonna unscrew all three and once you got those out we're gonna flip the steering wheel around we're gonna be right here with our center trim now the center trim is held on in a couple of positions. The first thing we want to do is we want to undo two tabs at the top of the center trim right here. They're going to be seated into these clips. So all you're going to do is you're going to take, you know, whatever tool you're using, pry those forward a little bit, forward a little bit, and you're just going to pull up as you pry here, right? So this is going to unclip first. Then you're going to want to pry it from the bottom as well as on the sides. So you're going to pry this up, then you're going to pry a button on the left up or on the right and then you're going to do the same thing on this side so from here onward the center trim should be pretty much ready to take off or feel like it's ready to take off uh, what is still holding it is actually the bundle of wires right here they're going to be all clipped in behind this plastic piece right here and all you're going to do is you're going to fish them out make sure they're not interfering with anything and the center trim should now be able to move away from the steering wheel there's a couple of things to disconnect here. This is how we like to do it. We are going to disconnect this little metal clip right here, which will be your horn. Pull that right off. You're going to unscrew this Torx bolt right here, which is going to be your ground. So you see it's already loose. I loosened that before. We can take that off now. And there's going to be two white clips. It's going to be this one right here. If you have that, if you don't, don't worry about it. Pull this out. And the same thing with this. You want to unclip this white connector. Again, all of this is going to take a little bit of finagling. You're going to use your tool to pry them loose. Uh, unclip this connector. And from here onward, we're going to take this whole piece as a bundle with the wires connected to the center trim. We're going to pull it out and actually transfer it onto our new steering wheel. If yours has the M1 and M2 buttons, you're going to unscrew these two bolts per side of button as well. These are, again, Torx bit bolts. And once that is disconnected, keep all of the other wires still connected to the center trim. No, no reason to disconnect literally everything. Uh, we're going to pull this out on this side. Uh, pull this M button out on the other side and pull out the trim. And this entire bundle, we're just going to transfer over to our new Charisma steering wheel. So we've uh, taken off our center trim. Now we're just going to remove the last few pieces that we need to transfer over. This is going to be the top cover. The top cover is just uh, clipped in via two plastic little ears here. We're just going to lift them up, lift them off of the little peg, and this cover comes right off. Next thing we do is we remove the backing plate, the plate that we clipped the airbag into. It's just going to be your uh, three uh, Torx screws. Take this off. And lastly, we're going to have this little mechanism right here. 
We're going to unscrew the two bolts that hold it, and we're going to pull that out, remove it, move it over to the steering wheel as well. So guys, we've got all of our peripherals here taken off of the OEM steering wheel. You've got your center trim, your backing plate, your shift paddles, the top piece, M1, M2 buttons, if you've got those, your vibrational mechanism. All of these are going to go right into your Charisma steering wheel. Installation is obviously just the reverse of their removal. Uh, once you've got everything assembled, we're going to go right back to the car and we'll be ready to put the steering wheel on. There's going to be one extra step if your steering wheel is an LED shift light steering wheel. We're going to have to wire up this, the shift light. Um, we're going to show you how to do that right now. And uh, if you don't have an LED shift light, you don't need to worry about this part at all. For those of you who have a LED shift light steering wheel, we've got our three wires here on the steering wheel. Only two are going to be applicable in the case of our BMW installation. We're going to have the red wire and the black wire for power and ground and where we're going to tap these will be on your center trim so on your center trim on the what is it left hand yeah on your left hand side you're going to find three wires red blue and black we're only going to need the black and red corresponding to the black and red on the steering wheel just going to have those soldered up crimped whatever way you prefer safely connected and uh, that's all you need to power your led shift light Guys, we fully assembled our new Charisma steering wheel with all of the peripherals. As you see, paddles are back on the car. So is the center trim. All of the wires are connected up. Uh, we're pretty much ready to take the wheel to the car and put it on the car. So since this is an LED steering wheel, you'll also see that right here to the right of the buttons. Those black and red wires, as we mentioned earlier, are tapped and safely taped up. So we're going to have power to our LED shift light. And now the next step is just get this in the car. We're back in the car. We're ready to put the steering wheel back on. All the steps are pretty much the same thing as taking them off, just in reverse order. So, first, mount your wheel. Make sure that the splines align and your clock spring is centered. There we go. We are going to tighten our center nut. After we tighten the center nut, the next step will be for us to plug in our connectors. And the last step will, of course, be to take our airbag, plug in that central pin as we did when we were taking it off, clip the airbag back in, and then you should be all set. Uh, with regards to tightening your center nut, always tighten to OEM specifications as per the specific vehicle. We do not give numbers specifically so that you can look up and ensure you're using the right torque spec. Now the last step for our LED shift light steering wheel is we connect the OBD2 port module to the OBD2 port of the car so that the steering wheel shift light can communicate with your ECU. All of our Gen 2 LED shift light steering wheels come pre-programmed from here at our shop. We set the RPM range to either what we deem appropriate if by default or as per customer request sometimes if somebody wants you know the RPM range to be starting a little lower in terms of the lights lighting up or finishing a little later if your car is tuned higher than uh, Redline. So this is the last step and after that we're ready to start the car up and uh, take a look at how it looks. Now we're talking. So now that the car's warmed up let's see how it looks with a rev. driving let's say you're ripping around the canyons if you're just driving around town normally you're not going to see anything lit up most importantly the wheel is no thicker than it would have been without it and because it's nicely tinted and actually ergonomically shaped into the steering wheel you retain what looks like a nice carbon fiber steering wheel without a shift light at the times where you don't want it to be showing so in a sense what that does for you is you have the best of both worlds you have a non-led steering wheel when you're just chilling out and you have a nice performance steering wheel that shows you where you are in your RPM range when you do want it, when you're gunning it, when you're driving hard.
Guys, thank you very much for watching our video. I hope you love the new Charisma Design LED shift light steering wheel on this M5. If you have any other questions or if you just want to order your steering wheel, please feel free to reach out to us on email, give us a call, or shoot us a DM on Instagram. We're always very happy to answer, chat, and discuss any kind of build. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Yeah, that's the one.